Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health and Fitness bringing you another episode of Science Power Fitness. Today we're talking about tissue degradation and remodeling. Uh, a lot of questions are asked around the timelines associated with recovery after a bout of strain or stress on tissue and how much time you need in order to recover from it. And a lot of it is subjective because we, we make assumptions based on the feeling of the tissue. So I don't feel sore, which equates to my body is ready to take on more load. The main concept here is that if you break your tissues down, you literally are ripping the filaments of the fibers, which stimulates an immune response, which then catalyzes the tissue to recover, and then it builds and fortifies itself uh, based on that stimulus. Now, the time it takes for the tissue to recover or remodel um, is the length of time that you need to recover for. And oftentimes, people are loading their tissues without um, sufficient recovery between the bouts of strength training and so their body never really fully adapts or gets the benefits of the strength training. And so the first thing is to recognize that there are specific periods that have been defined based on the intensity of the, the lifting parameter. So essentially it's a percentage of your one rep max. So if you're lifting heavy, heavy weight, typically it's gonna put more stress on the tissue to a point, right? Because then you get to a super compensation where you get up to like a high-end rep range, let's say like three, four, five reps around that range. Not a lot of breakdown on the tissue, but very stimulating on the nervous system. So there's this mid-range intensity around that six rep range to around 12 rep range, where you're really putting enough tension on the tissue that you're breaking these filaments down and it can take some time to recover. So that's normally falls into what's called a hypertrophy range, which means growth of tissue. Atrophy is the opposite, right? Withering and breakdown. Um, or again, max effort. So like that eight to six rep range or so. A lot of breakdown in the tissue. Now, a lot of research out there shows that it takes about five to seven days for the endothelium, the tissue, to recover from that stress on the tissue. And that's assuming, again, that we're getting good recovery, that we're eating enough, that we're hydrated, that we have the micronutrients to support the cofactors for our metabolism so these tissues can heal. But ultimately, it's just acknowledging that there's a time frame necessary to recover from this. And so if you go in and you start strength training on top of that after you've done that degradation, you actually might be ripping it down instead of building it back up. So again, you're getting the stimulus, but you're not getting the adaptation. So make, main takeaway today is that you need to learn how to uh, profile whether or not the tissue has recovered. Now, the gold standard, get an ultrasound out and actually look at the actual remodeling of the tissue. Now, if you don't have access to a handheld ultrasound, which most people don't, um, what are some subjective things you could look at? Well, we use heart rate variability, which is a measure of the autonomic nervous system. And so that's a gross interpretation of whether your body's recovered from a nervous system. And there are associations with the tissue being under recovered and a heightened sympathetic response from the autonomic nervous system. So that is a, a broad way of looking at it. We can also look at, again, subjective things like soreness and the ability to recover. Um, the other side is um, lifting of the weight. So is the strength returned? So can you lift with the same amount of power um, or exceed it in subsequent sessions of exercise. So if you're struggling with maintaining the same amount of weight or exceeding that, well, again, that could be an, um, a sign of lack of recovery. Um, other things, um, we can look at sleep quality, getting good sleep, or is your body actually able to get to bed and, and recover? Um, other things, body composition, now, that's more of a long term. You know, you can get these handheld uh, scales or body composition uh, scales, and it can look at tissue either withering or growth. It's not normally an acute thing, so we can't see it day to day, but it's more of a weekly or monthly. But you can see a longer term trend in your, your tissues. Um, but again, when we're looking at that, we also want to make sure that we look at our hydration levels because that impacts our lean tissue to fat ratios as well. So again, there's several things that we can do subjectively to interpret these things. But you do want to make sure that if you're in a range of intensity that you know what the general parameters are, you respect those general parameters, and then you use these subjective tools to try to measure the efficiency of the recovery and make sure that you're actually seeing positive adaptations on a regular basis. We don't want to see decrements in performance or strength. We want to see at least sustained or growth. And if you're not seeing those uh, indicators in your programming, maybe check in with someone to help you evaluate what the limiting factors might be 
and this might be one of them, uh, a lack of recovery. So questions on it, guys, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, stay active, stay in motion. Your body is designed to move, so keep after it. Make sure you get enough recovery, and we'll see you soon.